Hey guys, it's Bethany, your crafty BFF, and I am back with part three um, of this tutorial for this recipe mini album that I made. Um, in part three, I'm just going to mat the designer paper on the cover and on the pages. And I saw it would be helpful um, so that you have the measurements and it'll be, it should be easy for you to mat your beautiful recipe album. So I have here the collection called What's Cooking by Simple Story. Um, it looks like this. Um, I did order two of them because I wanted one for my album and one for the rest of the swap. <laughs> I know the album's going to take quite a bit of paper. So I have here 11 sheets of the 12 by 12 designer paper uh, cardstock. I say 11 because the 12th one I have already cut down for my um, cover. So I used this design here for my cover. I did want to go ahead and cut it out because I wanted to stitch my cover. So that's what I did. I cut them out. I measured, cut it out, and stitched it. Now for this album, because I wanted very much to get my front cover, my back cover, and my spine from one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock, what I'm doing is triple matting. And maybe it's a little overkill, but I, like I said, I wanted uh, to have my cover, both my front and back cover, and my spine to all be the same pattern paper. So, um, I'm going to mat with some gold foil, so, then some white cardstock, and then my designer paper. I'll, I will give you the measurements for each one. Um, but here I also have some red uh, solid color cardstock and some pink color cardstock that um, I can supplement with if I need to, um, if I start to run out of designer paper. Um, I, there's places that um, you can put the solid color cardstock instead of using designer paper, and so... I figured I would have this on standby just in case I needed it, um, but I'm not sure I will have to break that out. I also have my seam binding that I'm going to use as my closure. I'm going to use the white for this one, um, and that's the first thing that we're going to do. So I am going to cut two pieces that are about, I'm going to say nine inches so there's the first one and then we want the second one to be about the same so stretched out it's about nine inches all crinkled it's a little shorter but you you do you 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 put um how you do how much ever you want to do and so for the seam binding what i like to do is take my double-sided tape and put it, uh, guesstimate about where the middle is, and then put this down with double sided tape. And then I'll do the same on the back. <clears throat> Just guesstimating where the where, where they meet up. <laughs> Then I'll take my bone folder and press that tape down well on both sides. And then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue here just for some extra adhesion. And hopefully, you know, it won't be easy. It, doing both of these um, adhesives, the hot glue and the double-sided tape, will mean that it's not going to be easy to pull out. So then... And just make sure I can tie a nice bow, and I can. So, if you only want to do one layer here on your cover, then your measurements are going to be six and a quarter 
by eight and a quarter. So if you're only doing only doing one layer of your design, like say of your designer uh, paper, your pattern paper, then it's going to be six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. That will leave you a quarter inch border all the way around. However, if you want to get your front, back, and spine out of one single 12 by 12, then you're going to cut your gold foil at six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So that's what I've done here. And it's like I said, it'll leave a one quarter inch border all the way around. I'm going to just get my glue down here. This, this foil from Michaels, it likes to curl. Oh, I hate it. But it's all I have right now, so this is what we're going to use. Uh, make sure I get, get the edges well, and then in the middle, and then you line it up to make sure there's about a quarter inch all around on all four sides. Make sure it's nice and straight. Trying to look through the camera and look through in person. Make sure I got it right. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to take my bone folder and just press that down. It helps to spread the glue underneath the cardstock. So what I do is Hold on, where's my where's my spine? Where's my gold foil spine? I know I cut it. Is this it? No, this isn't it. Guys, I'm already losing stuff. I might have to cut another one, but if so, so be it. So the back is gonna be the same size, six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Oh, and I meant to pull up the, the backing of the double-sided double tape. It doesn't matter if you don't, but I like to, just so that the glue has something to stick to. And again, I'm going to line this up so there's about a quarter inch all the way around. Not wanting to stay down for me. <laughs> because I'm on camera. It wants to give, be difficult. Again, using my bone folder to spread that around. And I'm going to go ahead and cut myself a new piece of gold foil for the spine. It's going to be eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter. by two and a quarter. So the the cover mats are the only thing I've pre-cut out. Everything else I'm gonna cut out with you. So it's kind of like a little craft with me slash tutorial. Um I didn't know how well a video like this would do where it's basically just me cutting and gluing paper but i thought if it could be helpful to anyone then i would just go ahead and do it surely someone will find it helpful <laughs> <clears throat> so here is my spine piece like i said that's two and a quarter by eight and a quarter and line it up so there's a quarter inch all the way around and press that down So now I'm going to take my white cardstock, which is six and one eighth by eight and one eighth. So it's just one eighth smaller than that gold foil. So there will be an eighth of an inch border around the gold foil, around the edge of this white cardstock. I'm going to glue this one down.
I really wanted to get get that. Like I said, I really wanted to get the um, front, back, and spine out of this one piece of paper. And you can do it too if you do the mats like this. You can do a gold foil. You can do a solid color cardstock. And then your pattern paper because then you cut your 12 by 12 in half at 6 by 6 you know, at six inches, so then you have two pieces of six inches, and then you cut them at eight, so, and then with the leftover from that 12 by 12, as long as it's a non-directional paper, you can get your spine out of it as well, out of that bottom piece that you cut off the eight inches, <laughs> so I would cut it at eight inches first, and then cut that um, 8 by 12 in half at 6. So then you end up with two. Si oh no, that got cut. Oh no, how did that happen? I don't know, but I'm going to have to go with it. Because I worked so hard to get this paper. To save this paper and make it stretch out. Um, so like I was saying, um, cut it at 8 inches first. So you get a piece of six no eight by twelve and then cut that in half let me let me demonstrate i want to make sure i explain this well so if you have a 12 by 12 and you cut it lengthwise at eight inches first then you'll have a nice um eight nine ten eleven twelve four inch four you'll cut it at eight inches and you'll have one piece that's 12 inches by 8 inches, and then one piece that's 12 inches by 4 inches. And you take that piece that's 8 by 12 and cut it in half at 6. And then you can use this bottom, that bottom 4 inches for your spine. So I hope that makes sense. I don't want to confuse anybody. <laughs> but yeah, you can get your covers, your designer paper covers out of one 12 by 12 if you mat like this. So here's my spine. It's the white card stock is two and one eighth by eight and one eighth, just one eighth inch less than the, that gold foil is. So there's that. I'm gonna press that down. It's not quite even. Oh, that's better. So there's the spine, and then we'll do our back again. Your back is six and one eighth by eight and one eighth. Make sure you get the edges and then all in the middle. And it's one eighth inch less than the gold foil. Again. Line that up and press it down. I think it's going to look really neat. Even though it's a lot of work for a cover, you know, three, three matting layers. Um, I think it's going to look nice. <laughs> So there we have the gold foil and the white cardstock, and now we have our two pieces, or our our designer paper. These are, you have two pieces that are 6 by 8 and then your spine piece is 2 by 8 I'm going to use this, this cut piece for the back, for the back of the cover, and try to make sure it's glued down well so you can't tell that it's cut i don't know how i accidentally did that but you know okay so i'm making sure my stitching there is at the bottom and lining this up so that there is an eighth inch border all the way around the designer paper that looks pretty neat huh i've never triple matted before so First time for everything. And just press it down, spread it around. Especially for your cover, you want to make sure that um, all the layers are glued down really flat. Now we're doing our spine that, that's two by eight inches. And lay that down so there's about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Yeah, I like how that looks. Do 
then press it down. Add my glue all around the edges. And make sure that this little cut piece is glued down well. I can have it. Line this up. And press down. Oh no, that's not going to work. There we go. Excuse me while I fiddle with this, trying to make it look like it was never torn. <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing's perfect. We all make mistakes. Just carry on. And I'm just pressing this down. So there we have it. There's our matted cover. Triple matted cover. Looking good. We've got our seam binding closure. And if we open her up, if you remember, our, our front inside cover has this stand here. So you can put little recipe cards in here and there's a little, there's a little pocket to hold it upright. And then this, this closes flat with some magnets and then it flips up open and then there's a big pocket here. So you can f store um, recipe cards or photos or whatever it is that you want to use this album for. And then page one is the double pocket. So it has a really tall pocket and then a little bit of a shorter pocket. <coughs> I kind of went through and made some quick decisions about what papers were going to go where, but I'm still really indecisive when it comes to picking designer papers. So let's see. I was thinking this one for the stand because how pretty is that? corner floral there and then um, on the back of this one is a wood grain so I was thinking about doing the wood grain for this bottom pocket and then and then I was thinking about this floral pattern for this pocket here so it kind of matches because it's the same style floral what do we think what do we think I think I like it. So I think that's what we're going to do. Um, I designed this album so that the pages you are 5 and 7 eighths inch wide. However, the front and side cover is going to be 6 and a quarter. So you won't be able to get two full pages out of one 12 by 12. But that's just how album making goes. So I am going to set this to the side and we're going to cut our pieces, our two pieces for this here, for the stand and for the pocket. And I want as much of this floral in, in, in frame, you know, in the frame of the page as possible. So I'm going to cut it like this. At six and a quarter and then by this says eight and one eighth but I'm gonna recheck that measurement real quick because because I just want to make sure no it's not eight and one eighth oh yeah it is eight and one eighth eight and one eighth and like i said i want as much of this floral in the in the uh on the page as possible so i'm going to cut it like this and then this will fit right in there like so and then let's go ahead and get this paper and we're going to do 
five for the but for the bottom pocket here we're going to do five and seven eighths by four and seven eighths five and seven eighths oh you know what i just thought of i don't know if i'm going to be able to do that wood grain on the bottom pocket or not we'll see five and seven eighths by four and seven eighths and i thought i would go ahead and tell you right now that if you don't want to watch this whole video the way that you figure out your mat is to take a ruler and measure each page each pocket every little um feature and then you just subtract one eighth of an inch from that measurement so because this page is six inches wide the mat is going to be five and seven eighths one eighth one eighth inch less than six inches and then you measure this way and it's exactly five inches so your mat is going to be four and seven eighths inches because it's one eighth inch less than the pocket itself so i hope that makes sense and if you want to go ahead and just measure everything yourself go right ahead otherwise i am telling you each and every measurement for all of these um pages and pockets and whatnot so now we have this scrap here and i do want the wood grain going like this so i so i do have enough to do the wood grain down here what do you guys think you think that looks good it's awfully dark and i do have the six by eight paper pad here that has this lighter wood grain Ooh, i think i like the lighter wood grain Mm. Here I am being indecisive and using extra paper. I, I usually don't get the 6x8 paper pad, but I did for this collection. And I'm liking this lighter wood grain versus the darker. I don't know. What do you guys think? I wish you could tell me. I told you I'm very indecisive when it comes to paper choices. What else do I have? Mm, I have green, but that's too much green. And it's darker green. No. I can't make up my mind. I'm going to go with the lighter, the lighter brown. So, um, for that little pocket, you're going to cut yourself a piece of six and a quarter. By one and three eighths. One and three eighths. There's that. Let's go ahead and glue these down. Make sure it's the right direction. There is my bone folder. I'm just going to press that down and make sure it's nice and stuck. And I will go ahead. Ooh, what if we did this? No, I think that's too similar. So I like I like the wood grain. The wood grain it is. And 
press that down. <clears throat> and this tape, this pattern paper is gorgeous. This pink one with the grid on the back. It's a shame to cover it, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so I put that bottom down there in that pocket, and I'm just lining this up. Pressing down all around. Okay, so now we have to open this up, and we have this and this, the background and the pocket, and then we have the back of this too. I'm thinking for back here, we're going to do some solid color cardstock. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm thinking I'm going to use the pink. Back over here. And so, like I said, I'm going to do the back of our stand first. So these two pieces here, we need... Wow, Bethany, what's that? I can't read my own writing. <laughs> Three... Three and five eighths, I think. Yeah, three and five eighths. Okay, so we need six and a quarter. So let's do six and a quarter. By three and three fourths. And then six and a quarter by three and five eighths. I think this is the perfect kind of place to use a solid color cardstock instead of a designer paper um, because it's the back of the album and nobody's going to see it, right? So let me find a pokey tool so we can remove these. Um, The backing of the tape on the magnets. I believe it was part two that we I showed you how to install a set of magnets in an album. Oh sorry my pokey tool hit the tripod. So we're gonna take just one piece first and we're gonna wait and we're gonna glue it down. I'm sanding my album up so that I can get to the back easily. And then the magnets, it just wants to fold like it's supposed to fold. <laughs> then we have this piece here. We're going to take the backing off of these magnets or the tape I'm going to add our glue to our pink cardstock and then lay this down right here Slide that glue around so it gets nice and stuck. And we're done with that part. So now we can flip this open and we got to make some decisions here about what card, what designer paper we're going to use here. Let's see. This is just big enough to go there on the pocket, or we can do it in the background there. I'm thinking on the background instead of the pocket, because this pocket over here has it, and I want to switch it up a little bit. So, and then this 
measures perfectly for this pocket as well. And we'll, we can cut that leaf off there. I'm just trying to use my scraps and not cut into more paper than necessary. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut myself a piece of six and a quarter by two and seven eighths. Oh, I think it's already six and a quarter. Yes, it's already six and a quarter. So then I just have to do two and seven eighths. And that will fit my pocket here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing of the cape. Ooh, now I think maybe we should do this one. No, because there's a going to be a floral up there. Stick with your original plan, Indecisive Bethany. If there is time at the end of this video, which I don't think there's going to be time, because uh, we're already 30 minutes in, because I'm so indecisive. Um, I, I'm thinking I'll come back with a part four and decorate the album with you. Uh, decorate the front cover anyways. Did we say this is six and a quarter? It's just a little shy of six and a quarter, but it'll still work. And we're going to cut it by six. So six and a quarter by six. And we're going to put this right here on the in the, the back of the pocket. Now, it doesn't, it, I never cut a designer paper to go all the way down into the pocket because that's just a waste. I just cut it so that it goes down about a half an inch to an inch. Does that make sense? So you're not putting designer paper all the way down to the bottom of the pocket because nobody's going to see that anyways, right? So that's why it's only six inches vertically. There is this. And I'm kind of thinking we should just do um, a solid color card stock up here too. Because it's only seen when you flip it up. So let's do that. Let's do more solid color card stock here. And then it gives you, when you do solid color card stock in different areas, then it gives you room you can um, write on or document, um, you know, you can write about the photo or whatever you want to do. With salt, with a pattern paper, you can't write on it, you, you know, you won't be able to see it very well. So, six and a quarter by four and a half, and six and a quarter by three and five eighths. And that will cover this right here and this right here. Right? Okay. Let's glue it down. We gotta take this backing of the cape off. Glue this down. So you you do you while you're matting your album. You can use designer paper or colored cardstock, whatever you want to do. Um, and you know, but like I said, in certain areas, like the designer paper is just not necessary. And it provides an area that you can journal on. So you could like add a photo here and then journal about it here or whatever you want to do. Now we need to figure out for these two pockets. And I'm thinking for this top one, we're going to do the wood grain again. And then for the middle, 
What are we going to do for the middle? Or maybe this one in the middle? No, because it's not long enough. But I do have this scrap. No, that's the same paper. Never mind. I have this scrap. And I could do this here. And then this. I could do this wood grain here. And then this on top. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut this down to 5 and 7 eighths. And it's already at about 2 inches. So. That's perfect. So for this top pocket, you just need a piece that's five and seven eighths by two inches. And then just slide that down in there. Like so. And then I'm gonna take this one and cut it at three by five and seven eighths. So just taking an eighth of an inch off or so and then i'm going to slide this one down here into this pocket and then you see our two pages kind of coordinate and I, I like to do that in my mini albums is have my the two pages right next to each other coordinate using the same pattern papers and such so even when it you open it up, it still coordinates really nicely. And then press this down with my bone folder, and we can move on to page two. Now, page two is just one big open page, and page three is a pocket with a background. So, let's think about it. What did I think? What was I thinking for this page? We have these two papers that I like together. It's got this one's got the pinks, the light pink, the dark pink, and the mustard yellow and the browns. So I was thinking that we do this one in the background here and the flowers on the pocket and the flowers over here or should we do the stripes over here I think I'm going to go with my first instinct which was putting the stripe on page two and then using this for the pocket on page three. Is that what we want to do? Is that what we want to do, guys? I definitely don't like the... I'm not a big fan of the back of this one, so... Seven and seven, eight. I committed <laughs> by five and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths. And that will be my page two. And then my page three back. I'm going to do the stripes again in the back, back here. So I'm going to do four and a half tall and five and seven eighths wide. bring this in frame so you can see we're gonna do that and we're gonna do the flowers here on the pocket so for the pocket you need a piece of five and seven eighths by four and three eighths mm, I like the back of that one too so five and seven eighths by four and three eighths Oh, you can't even see me cutting. I'm sorry. Four and three eighths. And now we bring this back in and glue our pieces down. 
Like I said, I, I don't know how fascinating or entertaining or interesting a video like this would be because I'm just being indecisive with myself and cutting and gluing patterned paper. But if I'm hoping it will help just one person and that will be worth it for me. And press that one down. And then add this one to page two. My glue is trying to clog up on me. Hold on. We don't have time for this glue. Okay. And now glue this one down. There we have it. Now we can move on to pages four and five, which I think I remember what I was gonna do for this page. I'm gonna use this paper here and the back of this paper because there's just a little bit of teal on this red pattern paper. And I like I'm loving the teal. So I think I'm going to do the red on the pockets and the teal in the background. Let's move these scraps out of the way. And let's see here. We're going to go seven and seven eighths. And then we're going to do, for the pockets, you need three and three eighths by, two pieces of three and three eighths by seven and seven eighths. So three and three eighths. And again at three and three eighths. and a half and you'll be left with this but then you still have this bottom and this is a non-directional paper so you can use the bottom half of your 12 by 12 to get your other piece of three and a half by seven and seven eighths so i'm going to cut this at seven and seven eighths by three and a half so again you need for the pockets, you need two pieces of three and three eighths by seven and seven eighths. And then for for the behind the pockets, you need two pieces of three and a half by seven and seven and eighths. Let's glue our pockets down first. I really like this red and teal together. It's different, but it's really pretty, I think, and pretty eye-catching. There's our pockets. Now we're going to glue down behind the pockets. Get in there, paper. There we go. Maybe. There we go. Now this one, Put that 
down. And now we can do pages six and seven. I'm going to take a drink real quick. And for six and seven, I was really wanting to bring in some of this pink. So what was I thinking to go with the pink, though? That's the question. We have that one. Love this one. And we have this one. It's cut apart. Red polka dots. Red gingham. Green gingham. I, I guess I was thinking these two. But because I have the six by eight, I'm going to look at this real quick and see if there's anything else that might go with this pink one. That's kind of a lot of pink. But then again, then again, there is the flap, and the flap will break some of that up. Sorry, guys, I'm being indecisive again. Let me think about adding this yellow into the mix because there's yellow here. Let me add this yellow into the mix. That's too much florals though, huh? So let's do maybe the florals here. The fishbone in the back. This as the pocket. And then this scrap here as the... Ooh, I like that. And then this scrap here as the flap. I think that's what we'll do. Okay. Ready, guys? For uh, page six, is just one flat page. So we're going to cut a piece of five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. Hmm. I like to look at the cut aparts and see which ones I think I'll use and then use the opposite side. So I'm thinking that I probably use these two more than these over here. So let me let me think. I'm going to cut here. Five and seven eighths. And then seven and seven eighths. And there's our page six done. Let's go ahead and glue it down. funny about the cut aparts <laughs> like if I like one side of the paper then I make sure to use the side with the cut aparts that I, I would be less likely to use if that makes sense I don't know love this paper though it's really pretty okay now we're gonna do we said we were gonna do for the flap, this scrap that we cut for the preview for page pages two and three, this will work out just fine for the flap. So it needs to be five and a quarter, five and a quarter. I'm trying to think here which direction it looks best. I guess it's technically non-directional so okay five and a quarter by six and seven eighths 
and we need a corner rounder because I rounded the corner of my flap so I need to round the corner of my patterned paper like so and let's go ahead and glue that down my glue is not behaving sorry guys I don't know what the deal is today. Like I said, because I'm recording. I'm about to just take this tip off. I have a clog in here. Bear with me. Sorry, guys. I don't want to put too much glue down either, you know. If I take my tip off, then... I'll definitely put too much glue down so let's try this That lined up well. Press down. And then we flip open. And then we said that we would do the fish bone for the back of the pocket. So we're going to cut it at six and a quarter by four and three quarters. Six and a quarter. By four and three quarters. I'm gonna cut it at five and then cut it cut a quarter inch off because my paper trimmer is dumb and has it has this um division here right right where um the five <laughs> four and three quarters is so I'm sorry I was cutting out of frame again. I am just terrible at that. Lay this fishbone pattern down here. Behind our pocket. And then we said we were going to do this yellow down here on the pocket. So we cut for the pocket. It's six and a quarter by four and three eighths, six and a quarter. By four and three eighths. And get our pokey tool and remove the backing of the tape holding the magnet down. Because we need that magnet to keep that flap shut. But if you're using Velcro dots, you just use Add your Velcro dots after you've added your pattern paper. And they will work just as well. So there's that. And now we just have one final area to cover right here. This five, the, the back of the flap that's five and a quarter by six and seven eighths. And I think I'm just going to use this scrap of this fishbone to continue the pattern up. I think that's going to be our best option. So, five and a quarter. By six and seven eighths. And then I'm going to round the corners again. For, because our flat corners are rounded. I can this like this I'm going to get rid of my paper trimmer bring it back in the pokey tool and get rid of the backing of that tape 
and then add our glue all around the edges and then the middle and then we just lay this down like so there we go and press down Sorry if you heard that beep. That was my daughter's feed machine going off. And there we have it, guys. That is how you mat this fun little recipe album that I made. I gave you all the measurements. Um, I would have, and I would have had plenty of pattern paper to do to do this side and this side. But like I said, I. Sometimes it's just better to do pattern paper in some area or uh, solid color cardstock in some areas. So there we have it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Or like I said in parts one and two, if you have any difficulty making this album for this upcoming um, swap, then please feel free to contact me on Instagram. Uh, uh, over there, I'm at your crafty under your underscore crafty underscore BFF, just like I am here on YouTube. You can uh, per personal private message me, and I will be happy to help you walk you through whatever you need um, help with. Okay, so don't um don't be shy. <laughs> um, and thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Bye.